Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tube Talk! Tube Talk with your hosts Albert Bosma and Sophie Bosma on this Anzac Week special. Yes, I was going to say you have your you had your pin on your jumper but you've taken your jumper off. I have, but we I do have my com- Anzac pin. Yes, we are commemorating Anzac. I was told off last week by Sean Damien O'Connor who watched the show and he said you had dust on your desk. Yeah, Dad. Up your game. So I'm up my game. The desk has been, well, pretty much dusted. Back. So hopefully, hopefully, Sean, who is an owner of Elusive Boxes, has made the trip to Melbourne to drink wine and watch a race this weekend. Hopefully we get his approval. It could be because you had that award sitting there for quite a bit. Mm, attracted the eyes. Yeah. Right. Let's talk racing. Let's talk racing. That's what we're here for. We're going to start off with a cracker. Rama Rama won yesterday at Awapuni. Woo! Banana Rama. Rama Rama. Rama Rama. Not the female uh, uh, band from the late eighties, early nineties, but Rama Rama, and um, it was a very good win. He sat three wide back of the field, showed an excellent turn of foot to win. Just a third race day start. He um, has had a few little issues, which is why he's taken so long. To develop his career, he had one start as a two-year-old, um, and then hasn't raced again. But the patience will be rewarded. He has got a turn of foot to go through the grades. He'll go further than he did on Wednesday, than the 1400 metres, and he's got a very bright future ahead of him. So I'm very excited about this one. Mm-hmm. And we've got three thirds. We had three thirds this week. Three thirds in the last week. Three thirds make a whole. And we'll get into that. I do. A third, a third, a third. Exactly. Pretty much a win. First of all, we had Dashing Ruby who came third. In her third race day start, um, blinkers on, much better run. She's still a bit weak, but the ability's there. Uh, she was over a mile and she flattened out nicely. She's got a real stays action. She's by So You Think, and we think she'll develop into a nice day out. Probably go out for a spell now, but she's got a nice future over ground in front of her. Mm-hmm. And we also had Black Sav, who came third on Sunday. Black Sav, uh, yeah, uh, out of her grade, uh, upper grade, uh, very unlucky not to win, got held up, dashed through late, um, looks to have come back really well, so we've got, she, she was down to be sold in a couple of weeks' time, so we've got a couple of decisions to make there, but she'll likely start race next week and then we'll make some decisions about, about where she heads, what we do with her, but she looked... She looked a little bit like the Black Sam of old that had so much potential. It's exciting to see. Mm-hmm. And we also had Rock the Cradle who came third on Tuesday at Winger to We. Cherie, don't like it. Rock the Cradle. Well, it was Rock the Casbah, but really good run for third. Just a second start. His first start, we thought he'd just show cheek, and he sat up handy but didn't finish it off. And we believe that was because the track was hard. He's got onto a softer surface, a kinder surface, uh, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday, and he has been given a lovely run by Sam Collett. Just got held up, but then dashed late. She felt that if she had one ride on the horse previous, she might have won it. She would have just got going a little bit earlier on him. Um, but he was strong to the line. He's going to develop into a lovely stayer. He'll probably go a mile next start but excited about his future. Mm-hmm. He can probably race right through the winter and he, he'll, be, he'll be winning races. And finally, we have an honourable mention from last week. Actually, yesterday. Pull your socks up, ran forth, and the whole family was there. We were, though. The whole family was there at Avondale Races. It was, they had a good crowd. It was quite fun, wasn't it? It was indeed. Did it was you have a good Coke? Time. We got, we got Coca-Cola and hot chips. We got to see the horses running. It was lovely. Yeah. Pull your socks up. Re- really well-named horse. Got four white feet or legs. Um, very hard race for her to debut on. She's a maiden having a first start against winners. And uh, raced really well. Just a little bit of greenness. And she got brushed in the running and just sort of reacted to that. Lost a couple of lengths and a bit green in the straight. Could have easily been due to a little bit closer. Really good run. Uh, she looks a filly of good promise. She's a full sister of Prince Mambo. She'll probably have one more start, um, and then we'll 
put her out for a spell and probably sit her for the thousand guineas. Um, but show she has a lot of ability. Will go a lot further than she did the twelve hundred yesterday, and uh, we're excited about her future. Mm-hmm. Now, in this upcoming week, we've got five runners. We'll get cracking. Starting on Friday at Melbourne, we have got Elusive Boxes in Race 5. Yeah, so Elusive Boxes is running both days. So she's in Race 5, got a nice barrier draw of 4. Uh, looks like it'll be a 7 or 8 horse field, so hopefully she can settle midfield. Um, the concern is the track, she likes a little bit of give, looks like it's going to be a good 3. That can negate her finishing off, she can just sort of not quite finish off, that is the concern. But she's well, if she handled the track, She's a definite top three chance on a good track, on a better track. She's on a worse track, a dead slow. She's a winning chance. Yep. And Sean Damien O'Connor will be on course with no dust. Woo. Okay, <laughs> moving on. On Saturday at Hawke's Bay Race 1, we have got Starry Bell. Uh, Starry Bell was the victim of the worst ride of the century last start. Uh, I'm still getting over it. Um, it's got barrier one over a mile. We were gonna, we were looking at running a Mai Pukarau possibly uh, next week, but the weather forecast is packed in. So Saturday looks like it could be a good to dead track, a good three to dead four. As long as the rain doesn't come, he's in the first race. So he'll run at Hawke's Bay, Samantha Wynn will ride, happy with her. She's a good jockey. Um, barrier one could be a little bit of a a difficult one for him. He's a colt. I mean, he's on his own. He really tries. He's got horses around him. He can have a bit of a look and lose his focus. But from barrier one, he should get a lovely trip in transit. Track should be good for him, and he should be right in the finish. He, we think he's a very good horse. Um, this is likely to be his last start. He'll go out. He'll be. He will probably be gelded. We'll see and come back and he has got a very bright future. He really does. His last couple of runs have not been true to the ability he has and hopefully he can produce that and show that on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And in race four on Saturday at Hooks Bay, we have got Zipper. Last start winner. She's barrier five, there's a scratching inside already. She comes into barrier four. Rosie Myers rides. Uh, from that barrier, she'll, she'll sit reasonably handy in the first four or five, I think. Blinkers go on. When she won the other day, she just wandered around, had a bit of a look left and right and look around uh, and switched off a bit so the blinks will help her focus. The question for her is, uh, this is the first time she's been on a good track. She may, may handle a good track, we just don't know. Um, but we do know that she handles it slow and a bit wetter. So that's probably the question mark. She's well, we think she's improved, we think she can run a really good race. It's just running on a good track for the first time is, is a bit of a question mark as to whether she will handle that or needs it a bit wetter. Mm -hmm. And our final runner on Saturday at Hawke's Bay is in race seven. It is What a Diva. What a Diva, very, very good first up. Could have won with a clear run over 1400. Steps up to a mile. She is a stayer, so she'll be better again after this. Uh, she's got a nice barrier draw. She should be able to get a good run midfield with Rosie Myers on board. Um, and if she gets a nice run, gets presented in the straight on a good surface, there is rain forecast on Saturday, but hopefully it doesn't come or it only is a dead track, she can be right in the finish. Only question mark if there is second up. Sometimes stayers will go really well first up and they'll be a little bit flat and dour second up. So that's the only question, but we expect a good run from her. She's a winning chance. Mm -hmm. um, Back to Sunday, back to Sunday, back to Melbourne on Sunday, again race five, again elusive boxes. And the weather forecast has been to uh, pack up a bit and it's been to rain Saturday, Sunday. So we're expecting a slow track, possibly even a heavy track, but a slow track will really suit her on Sunday. She's got a barrier two draw. She'll probably settle about midfield or so. Uh, Terry Mosey will just have to get her off the fence and track something at the right time. But on a wetter track with a run under her belt on Friday, she should be very competitive on Sunday. It could be a very good race for her. I would say the same thing on Friday except for track conditions. So if she if it rained on Friday, she'd be right enough. But Sunday, with the way the forecast is, I think she can be right enough. Mm -hmm. And now we move on to bit of the week. Of uh, the week. No, it's just two claps. Oh. <laughs> you just do a bit of the week. Last week, Sophie. 
Last week, Mega Blast won and paid $7.60. Yeah, and Whoa. $3.10 were back. We're back in business. Good selection. Actually, it was a bit shorter than I thought it would be. I thought it would pay a bit more than that. So, but a good win. Fresh up over a mile, Route 2. Ooh. Good horse. And good we're going to do it again this week. We've got a special this week. Special this it's week? It's a horse I've been waiting to come out. I saw him run a few weeks back at uh, Tirapa. And he was very unlucky. You can reveal the horse's name now. From all, please. Caristo running at Tirapa in race four on Saturday. So he ran on was it the seventh of April. Very unlucky over twelve hundred meters. Got back in the field, tracked up. You watch the replay. He just had nowhere to go. It was full of running in a very strong field. Um, he he steps up to a mile. So twelve hundred mile is a little bit of a question mark. Uh, but he's got a good draw bear of five. Cameron Lammis rides him, and I'm very interested, from the Murray Baker stable, and they've got another horse in the, the race, which Matt Cameron's riding, and normally Matt Cameron ride, would ride the uh, more favoured one, but I suspect that in this circumstance, Caristo is the better chance. Um, he's got a nice barrier draw, I think the mile will suit, even though there is a small question mark going up 400 metres, should get a reasonable track conditions, the weather forecast looks quite good. Uh, it is some rain on, on Saturday, but it shouldn't be too bad. He should get a nice trip. And if he gets space in the straight and winding up, I think he's a really good bet, each way bet. And because Matt Cameron's not on him and it's quite a strong field, he could be $8, maybe eight and two seventy something like that, I think. So, Caristo is our... Bet of the week. Bet of the week. So, let's see how it goes. We'd also like to make a small mention... Yes. That this Saturday marks 16 years since Go Racing's first group winner. That's right. Silky Red Boxer. Yeah, he won the Cambridge Thoroughbred Breeders' Stake 16 years ago. Uh, it was an awesome day. We had so much fun. We were in the stands. He was about a $10, $11 shot. Uh, we were all in our shirts. We were screaming. You could see him come down the outside. Noel Harris on board. It was so exciting, and he started the role of where we are today. So, a red letter day. He's right racing. behind you as well up there. There he, is. there he is. That was Dad's first baby. The mighty silky. The mighty silky. Yeah. So let's see if we can get another win on Saturday for the 16-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. And Dad, would you like to mention the horse behind you there? The El Rocket and Arabelle filly. Yes. So this El Rocket... The filly is very close related to Rude Awakening. Her mum, Inara Bell, and Rude Awakening were half-sisters. So we saw this filly at, at the farm and also then we saw it at the sales and we loved her. We thought she's just a bigger version of Rude Awakening. We actually thought we might have to pay about 100 grand for it, but we paid 50,000 for it. Ooh. And uh, we're quite excited by her. She's really, really tough. I've said she is so tough that um, you can't get near her food and she'll, if you try and get near her and, and give her a pat, she doesn't really like it, she's not a princess, she's all about doing the job. It's exactly what Rude Awakening was like. So she's got 25% um, left in her. So there's a couple of shares left and she's not expensive. She's about three, what is she, about 3,300 a share, 5% share. So a lot of Rude Awakening people are taking shares in her. Um, some good people. So. Have a look at her on our website. Jump in. Uh, if her attitude is anything to go by, she'll be another Red Awakening. And she'll, yeah, at a very, very good price. So have a look. Have a look. And we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. On Thanks, Zach. Bye. Bye.